Hi there, this is John Maida. I'm here to talk about CX, computational experience, as computation is changing everything. We have the four ingredients of computational experiences called LEAD, LEAD. But let me talk about the origins of computational experience. So this book here is designed by Muriel Cooper. It's a famous book called Learning from Las Vegas. It is a book by Robert Venturi, Denise Scott Brown, Stephen Isenor, and it's sort of seen as a kind of landmark in how design could disrupt how you read, basically making something visual into something miraculously experienceable. It's not a regular book. People complained that it was too hard to read. But it was the kind of thing that happened because of someone named Muriel Cooper. Muriel Cooper is a person who is one of those forgotten figures that I like to remember. So, learning from Las Vegas, there's also a book on Muriel Cooper. Please check that out. I gave mine away. And so, every book I like, I actually give away. Every book I have, hmm, interesting. Uh, but let me show you the books that I have today. So, first of all, Mismatch. This is one of my favorite books. It's written by Kat Holmes. Kat Holmes is formerly of Microsoft, and she's laid out a way to think about how computation essentially has disrupted how experiences are largely unfair and excluding. And so if you ever want to learn about how to address that mismatch, check it out. I actually bought this in an auction on eBay. Let me put this books down. And it is one of the early books that are the tabulation from the WPA, Work Projects Administration Project of the Federal Works Agency. This was during the Great Depression, and this was uh, work that was funded to be able to enable all kinds of projects to happen to make sure people were at work. And this book here is by Lyman Briggs and Arnold Lowen, but the person who actually led the project is Dr. Gertrude Blanche. What this is, is it's a, it's a table of statistics that covers a variety of tangents and cotangent uh, tabulations, all done by hand. So this is all human computation made by human beings and led by Gertrude Blanche, but sort of like on the second page. Well, not sort of actually on the second page. Not cool. Now, if you think about design and a link to computation, it goes way back. It goes back to the history of geometry. Uh, geometry has always been linked with art. Uh, why? Because there's something about geometry that is geometrically beautiful. And the fact that many of the things we have in our environment are grounded in geometry. Take a look around you. You'll find circles, triangles, squares, rectangles. They're all over the place. That's geometry. So geometry, science, kind of mathematics, all linked together on the visual domain, also in three dimensions as well. And so that's where computation has long intersected. But computation can seem a bit, and mathematics can seem a bit, uh, how do you say, uh, cold. And so that coldness got a little warmer because designers considered how would you take computation and make it into something you feel. This is a, a beautiful book by Carl Gerstner. And Carl Gerstner was one of the founders, I believe, of computational thinking in design. Basically, systems approaches to taking apart design problems and making them reusable. You know, today we have all kinds of design system stuff, right? For instance, this is a great book from Envision, Design Systems Handbook. And we have all these design systems, but where they come from uh, they've all come from this kind of thinking from the Swiss. The Swiss were masters at considering how systems could change how you design things. This is a book on the grid system. If you've never checked out grid systems and design, it makes everything easy to design. Most of web design is based upon this kind of thinking in grids. Grids. So you see that? Divs, spans. Okay, you get it. On the advanced side, however, I look to the work of Nicholas Negroponte as really reshaping how we think about computer science and design. Nicholas Negroponte's work stretches back to the 60s and 70s. These are two books I found on an auction. I'm quite happy about them. 
And they speak to this era where Negroponte is trying to describe how computers and design would intersect. Kind of a far-fetched idea because at the time computers couldn't do much, but Negroponte laid out his ideas that somehow people would design on the computer one day. Intersect that work in the space of the classical world. Think of Sean Cage and all of his thinking about how to deconstruct how we think of art. Think of the core underlying system versus the surface of art. Not to mention in the graphic design field, so many incredible people like Tom Ockersay love that. He was able to think of these kinds of things. This is a type book. That's quite beautiful. You see it's like V, M. So playing with space, uh, this is before computer graphics, of course, is something that designers were able to excel at in a way that no one really else could. But this kind of knowledge was never too, quote unquote, useful because you could never distribute it. Another example is cybernetic serendipity. This is a big exhibition that happened at the Museum of Modern Art, and it laid out this idea that you can make things out of computer programs. Pretty radical idea, again, from a long time ago. But this is the 60s, mind you, before web stuff, Swift, Flutter, you know, <laughs> JavaScript, whatever. This is already sort of in motion. It takes a long time to take, to take an idea and turn it into action, right? 60s, how many years is that? 50 years later, we're actually now integrating computation in the arts and design. Another landmark piece of work is a work of Charles and Ray Eames, this Powers of Thames film, if you haven't seen it. It's pretty amazing, but you might get a little depressed when you see Cosmic View, which Powers of Ten is based on. It's kind of eerie. The universe in 40 jumps, check it out. So this is like a square, and you're zooming into someone in a park, and you're zooming out 10 to the minus whatever, 10 to the plus whatever, and you're like, wait a second, and it's going into outer space, and it's coming back, and it's coming back into the person's hand, and getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So a little bit eerie, but powers of 10, this kind of thinking is about how computation works. Remember, computation can span infinite space and can also work in, in, in the case of infinitesimal detail. Pretty weird stuff, computation. Last book on the tour of books is the work of William J. Mitchell. Please check him out. There are so many books that he wrote while he was alive. He was a dear mentor, teacher, visionary. My gosh. And this is just one of his books. This is Bill Mitchell writing in, I think, let's see here, in the 90s, early 90s, about how digital images would be used to be able to fool your eyes. But he points out this has been happening for centuries, that artists have been used to create propaganda to confuse the eyes and actually make you believe in what isn't real. So, Bill Mitchell, check him out. Lots of books by him. They're all discontinued, so super cheap. And thanks for visiting. Bye.